Welcome to Radiologist Headquarters. I'm Dr. Dan Koval, and it's time for five cases in five minutes. Thoracic imaging number one. I'm going to show each unknown case slide for about 10 seconds, and you can pause to study the images further if you'd like. I'll then review the findings, reveal the diagnosis, and move on to the next case. Ready? Let's go. Case one, slide one of one. Okay, so this is a frontal chest x-ray showing lucency along the left mediastinum and left heart border. There's also less pronounced lucency along the right upper mediastinal contour here, and that indicates pneumomediastinum. Another finding of pneumomediastinum that we see here is the continuous diaphragm sign, where you can notice how the diaphragm continues across both the right and left hemithoraces. Normally, that stops here around the cardiophrenic angle, but when there's air outlining the inferior aspect of the heart, you see that interface and that's a clue that there's pneumomediastinum. So this is often spontaneous and can be associated with asthma, but we also see in the setting of trauma, esophageal perforation and tracheobronchial perforation. We can also see the pneumomediastinum on the lateral view here, anterior to the heart. All right, case two, slide one of one. This is a CT of the lung bases and upper abdomen. So we're in the early arterial phase here in the upper abdomen, and you notice that there's this patchy geographic hyperemia within the medial segment of the left lobe, also known as segment four. And on this maximum intensity projection image here on the right-hand side, you see that there are these collateral vessels entering into that area of patchy hyperemia, as well as extensive left chest wall, collateral vessels, and paraspinal vessels. So segment four of the liver is also known as the quadrate lobe, not to be confused with caudate lobe, which is segment one, and this is known as the hot quadrate sign. This has also been described on nuclear medicine sulfur colloid scans as the focal hepatic hotspot sign. So what causes this sign? Well, if we look at some more of these MIP images, you can again see all these extensive chest wall vessels, but notice how there's also internal mammary collateral vessels, and those seem to continue on into paraumbilical venous collaterals into the region of the ligamentum teres about this area of geographic hyperemia in the quadrate lobe. And if we look at these coronal reformatted contrast-enhanced CT images, there's the superior vena cava, and it's occluded by this large mass invading the superior mediastinum, which was a lung carcinoma. So this was SVC obstruction from lung cancer. Here's an axial image showing that same mass there obliterating the superior vena cava, and it's also partially encasing the innominate artery. And we again see all these collateral vessels passing through the mediastinum along the chest wall and reaching the liver causing that quadrate sign. So whenever you see that focal hepatic hotspot, that should clue you in that there may be a supervena cava obstruction due to malignancy. And another note, you tend to only see that quadrate sign on CT in the hepatic arterial phase, not on the portal venous and delayed phases. All right, case three, chest x-ray, chronic dyspnea, and cough slide one of two. Slide two of two, CT scan. Okay, so on this frontal chest x-ray, you see diffuse ground glass and airspace opacities throughout the lungs. And this is non-specific depending on the history. It could be multifocal pneumonia, ARDS, or diffuse alveolar hemorrhage or edema. Looking at the CT scan, there's extensive smooth interlobular septal thickening with overlying diffuse ground glass opacity. And just to clarify, ground glass means it's an opacity that you can see through. You can see the underlying bronchovascular structures, similar to as if you were looking through a smoky pane of glass, compared to airspace opacity, which this patient does have a few patchy airspace opacities here at the lung bases, that you can't see through. That's a dense consolidation. There's also a small left apical pneumothorax, which is a nonspecific finding that you can see in the setting of any chronic interstitial lung disease. Now, as we zoom into that coronal reformatted image, you can better see that interlobular septal thickening and the overlying ground glass opacity. And this pattern is known as crazy paving. And this is a nonspecific pattern that can be seen in the setting of pulmonary edema, diffuse alveolar hemorrhage, ARDS, also pneumocystis gyrovicii pneumonia in patients that are immunocompromised. But in a patient with a subacute or chronic history of indolent lung symptoms like this, this turned out to be pulmonary alveolar proteinosis. And the majority of these cases, about 90% are autoimmune, and that leads to this intraalveolar accumulation of proteinaceous granular material, giving this appearance of crazy paving. Secondary causes include hematologic malignancies and also inhalational causes like exposure to silica dust that could lead to silica proteinosis. And the treatment is typically whole lung bronchoalveolar lavage. All right, case four, slide one of two. Slide two of two, CT scan.
Okay, so we've got frontal and lateral views of the chest, and you can see that there's a mass here in the left suprahilar region on the frontal view, and that's in the anterior superior mediastinum on the lateral view. So when you have an anterior superior mediastinal mass, you could think of the five T's for your differential diagnosis. So could this be originating from the thymus, like a thymic cyst, a thymoma, a thymic carcinoma, or a thymolipoma? Could this be related to the thyroid gland, like a goiter or a thyroid cancer? Don't forget that the thoracic aorta also lives around here. And could this be a thoracic aortic aneurysm? And then also teratoma and other germ cell tumors. And then lymphoma doesn't start with a T, but you could say terrible lymphoma because that can also cause lymphadenopathy in the anterior mediastinum. Looking at the CT scan, you can see that this anterior mediastinal mass has clear fat density in it. You can see it's isodense to the fat here in the subcutaneous tissues. There's also some soft tissue elements as well as some peripheral calcification that looks very thin. We don't see any invasive features. It seems well encapsulated. And this is a mediastinal teratoma. So these are germ cell neoplasms that usually have detectable fat. They may also have soft tissue calcification and occasionally fat fluid levels. If you're lucky, you'll actually see formed teeth within them. And also mature teratomas are the most common, which are benign. Immature teratomas are more solid looking and those still have an excellent prognosis in children, but those can have a malignant germ cell tumor component that needs to be further evaluated. All right, last case, case five, slide one of two. Slide two of two, CT scan. Okay, so on this frontal view of the chest, we have predominantly peripheral consolidation bilaterally. And also notice that there is some subpleural sparing at the right lung base here, possibly also some lobular sparing here at the right lung apex. Looking at the CT scan, you can again see these peripheral consolidations and also notice again the subpleural sparing that we see in certain areas. It almost looks like the consolidations are being peeled off the pleura. Some panlobular sparing there at the right lung apex. You also see a few ill-defined nodular densities scattered throughout the lungs here. And then also notice these areas where you have the central ground glass opacity and surrounding increased density, giving a reverse halo appearance. These findings are typical for COP, or cryptogenic organizing pneumonia. And this was formerly known as BOOP, which is bronchiolitis obliterans organizing pneumonia. And that was changed in part due to the confusion with bronchiolitis obliterans, which is unrelated. And it's thought that COP is a reaction of the lungs to an injury where granulation plugs form in the alveolar ducts, and that leads to this surrounding inflammatory change. It can also coexist with NSIP, or nonspecific interstitial pneumonia, which can also have subpleural sparing, and that may be why we get that same feature sometimes in COP. So you can also get these perivascular or peribronchial nodular densities, and you might get lobular sparing or perilobular lines. We don't have that so much in this case. And these patients often present with a subacute time course where they have symptoms for two to three months before being diagnosed. And the treatment is typically corticosteroids. Now, one of your main differentials for peripheral consolidative opacity would include eosinophilic pneumonia. And interestingly, this patient on tissue diagnosis had coexisting acute eosinophilic pneumonia. So this was kind of a mixed lung injury pattern. Let's look a bit further at that reverse halo sign where you have central ground glass opacity surrounded by a rind of increased density, airspace density. So that's actually fairly specific for COP, but it's not that often seen. It's only seen in about 20% of cases. And it's also been described in other diseases like opportunistic infections and sarcoidosis. And don't confuse that with the halo sign, which is the opposite of this, where you have a central solid nodule surrounded by ground glass opacity. That can be seen in the setting of angioinvasive fungal infection, as well as other diseases. Now, the other name for the reverse halo is the atoll sign. And an atoll is a ring-shaped reef, or an island formed of coral. So I wonder if the radiologist that coined this term was thinking about a more tropical environment than the dark reading room that they were trapped in. <laughs> Hey, that's it for five cases in five minutes, thoracic imaging number one. If you enjoyed this lecture, please subscribe to Radiologist Headquarters on Apple Podcasts and YouTube. It would be superb if you shared these lectures with even just one person or left a podcast review. Visit us at radiologisthq.com for more info or follow us on social media to get updates. Thanks and have a great day.